Hey, how's it going YouTube and 3D Print Everything for Profit Facebook page? This will be posted on YouTube and then posted there, so that's why I said that. Uh, I want to make this video quick as the last best video I've done, the one where I over doubled my subscribers, uh, was on how I turned 3D printing into my full-time business. So uh, I want to make a shorter video um, for people who want to make profit for their printer. So this video is just based on things I can come up with off the top of my head to help you make money with your printer. So first off, how many printers do you need to make full-time income? In my opinion, when I first researched this, it was somewhere around 10 to 20 machines running regularly. And I would still agree with that. If you've got 10 to 20 machines running, you're probably gonna be around what you can sustain yourself, put a little bit aside, pay your bills, and buy some more machines. Um, if you're under that, if you got two to three, four printers, you're probably gonna be spending a lot of your profits on buying your fifth and sixth and 10th printer and uh, you know, you're just gonna have to build up from there. Uh, one of the big things that helped me when I get started was I was looking for money. I was looking to get into debt. I wanted someone to loan me 10 to $60,000 so I could buy a 3D scanner, so I could buy other 3D printers that did different things. And uh, someone told me, hey, you don't need to do that. Um, just bootstrap it. So that's what I did. I would recommend that to y'all. You'll stay out of debt. If you can get into debt and you feel like you have a really good business opportunity, then uh, you know that might be the way for you. But I'm... 29 I filed for bankruptcy at 19 I won't get into that story now but um, I didn't know what I was doing <clears throat> you know and I'm still just bootstrapping this I don't have all the answers here but I'm just sharing with my experience uh, number three and probably the biggest thing that I can think of is most people aren't charging enough okay if, if charging seems complicated <clears throat> the easiest way to do it the way I do it if you're doing FDM prints charge by the print hour I felt like I was starting to make money around two to three dollars a print hour. That's when it was like, oh, okay, this job at 12 hours will pay me 25 bucks. I'm now up to six dollars a print hour. I've seen other shops go up to 10 to 15 a print hour. So don't be afraid to uh, don't be afraid to charge a little bit more than what you are. You don't need to look at your filament and say this cost me 50 cents. I should only charge a dollar or two. Go buy the print hour. Your time is worth money. If you're putting something on a printer and it's failing and then you have to reorient it a different way and it fails and then you have to make a change to the model, all that is your time. That's a part of R&Ding when doing these. Don't let people beat you up on price and everything else like that. Some things just aren't worth it. That would be the next thing, I'd say number four. Don't print things that are too difficult or that you just can't do. Sometimes you have to say that's not ideal for 3D printing. Um, I've definitely approached this business with if I don't know how to do it, I'll try and figure it out. Um, with that, though, I've also made a handful of customers mad by not being able to complete their order over weeks or months. And, you know, I've learned a lot with that, so it might be good to do those occasionally. But you don't want to sit there and stack up five jobs you can't do and those be the only things you're doing and then it costs you money and then some of them want to refund or demand a refund or bad review you. You know, definitely early off, if you don't have a, a, a good bank of reviews, we'll say that's number five or six, um, you need to have reviews. And you don't want to get a lot of negative reviews. You want to get positive reviews. So <clears throat> how to find positive reviews? Ask your customers for them. If you get a customer that's happy, if they buy a twenty, hundred, thousand dollar part, whatever, and they love it and they're super happy, just say, hey, writing a review on Google will help. And if you don't know, there's metrics and weight to reviews. So someone just giving you a five star is great. That's one review, right? If someone gives you a five star plus, you know, hey, I, I loved this service, that's even better because now they've commented something. What you ideally want is one to two paragraphs. If you can get two paragraphs in a review, it's going to weigh more than all the other ones. So if someone just says, you know, someone gives you a negative review that says they didn't provide a good service or, you, you know, their part was bad or, you know, they, they took too long and it's a quick one sentence, if you get someone to write a two, three paragraph, that will come up higher than the negative review. So you definitely want you know, multiple paragraphs. And then also pictures. If they can upload one to two pictures, so if you do a, a job for someone and they're super happy, say, hey, if you can take a couple of photos of those and upload it on my Google page, upload it on my website, upload it on Yelp, upload it on Google Reviews or Facebook, all of those will help. Um, another thing, don't be afraid to give away 10 to $40 prints for those reviews. If someone says, hey, how much is this? And you know it's a $20 print and you know it costs you you know, 50 cents of plastic and it was a 30 minute print or whatever, just give it to them and ask for a review for it. And if they're happy with that, great. I'll tell you, honestly, about 50% of the time I offer to give something 
to someone for free for a review, they still demand they pay for it and they give me the review. And that's the type of customer service and customer retention and response you want. So definitely try to get the review, try to get the payment. Sometimes it's worth giving away you know, free stuff for a review. And it's not, I don't want this to sound like you're paying for reviews or <clears throat> you're doing anything else. I, I don't personally feel like that's a negative thing. If the customer likes your service, that's what you're asking for. You're not trying to you know, go to a, <clears throat> a craft event and say free 3D prints for a five-star review. That's bad. That looks bad. That's morally not acceptable. But if you know if, if that DJ loves his helmet that I printed, um, you know, and I ask him for a review, he's in that thing several hundred dollars, almost more than a thousand. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, "Hey, I, I I would like an honest review from that." And and generally say that too. Say honest review. Most of your customers, if you know they're happy, you know it'll be a five star review. But don't be afraid to just say honest. Don't specifically request for five star reviews. All right. I've, hammered enough on reviews, but that's one of the reasons that I started this group. That's why I'm going to hammer on it. I found when I first got started, reviews were probably one of the top things that helped my business grow. When I got my first three to five reviews, I had someone call me and say, hey, I noticed your reviews. Okay. Um, next thing, diversity in printers. So if you've got, you know, three to 10 printers, you know, it's probably good that you have a couple small ones and at least a couple big ones. <clears throat> you know, you're going to want one to two printers at a 12 inch size. There's occasionally I get parts that are just bigger than 180 or 250 millimeters and you need a 300 millimeter printer. Sometimes, you know, it's, it, it, there's just no way around it. Sometimes I need a printer to do really big stuff. Another um, one, I'm not really doing great at, at listing these off by numbers. Let's say we're at six or seven now. Partner with other 3D print companies. I'm not gonna give away all my secret sauce here, but not everything I do for my customers is done on these machines. Some machines I lease, some machines I literally send to a different company that has more machines than me. Uh, not necessarily more FDM machines, but they've got different types of machines. There's multiple companies out there, I'm not gonna list them, you can find them, that will have fleets of large format SLA, SLS printers, and they make their stuff in-house, they make all their, their materials in-house, and what I had found is it's cheaper to literally go through their service than it was for me to buy my own SLA printer and buy resin by the liter. I mean, they're making it by the 55, 500 gallon, you know, tank. That is going to be cheaper than what I can buy slowly packaged in a small liter, half liter, 500 milliliter bottle. It's literally easier and better for me to go through some of those. Now, I don't think always, you know, sometimes you have to see what's better, an FDM or an SLA print, you know, but there's opportunities for you if you can play middleman in between other services. And I would even offer my services. If you're looking at this setup and you say, hey, somebody just came to me with a 500 part order and they need it delivered in two weeks and I only have three printers, there's no possible way I could do that. Maybe you can get done 50 in two weeks. You know, if, if you know that I might have the printing capabilities, hit me up. I'd be more than happy to complete an order for you. Make sure that you get some good profit on it. Make sure that I make a little bit off of it and then go forward with it. And if it doesn't make sense, maybe I'm charging more than you and you buying the parts from me won't leave you enough. Um, you know, that happens too, but you'll start to understand the process a little bit better. And if you make connections with other 3D print companies, it doesn't necessarily need to be me. I'm not trying to specifically plug me. I'm just saying that I am a resource for you, but I'm sure there'll be others around you too. Some, some of the other local guys around me will hit me up to do stuff like that. Um, you know, same thing with this. You get somebody that says, no, 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 I have to have it in one piece. It's gotta be 36 inches long. Here's a printer that can do that. I, I get calls from literally states away, California to Colorado, just to use this printer. So that's an opportunity for you. If you're watching this, you, you know, feel free to hit me up. I, I, 3dprinteverything.net. My website or my, my Gmail is 3dprints with an S at gmail.com. Shoot me an email with an STL. We can help you out. Um, here's an example of SLA prints. I mean, you can't do this on a frozen or whatever. You know, maybe you could just because it's in the right size, but I couldn't get one, two, three, you know, four, five, six of these prints done in less than 10, 15 days and then have them shipped to me. Anyways, let's go on to the next point. Um, location, low overhead. I would say if you're getting started, do your best not to start in a location, or if you do, spend the least amount positive. Um, most of the businesses that I see go under is just because they can't afford where they are. Um, they're paying, you know, $900, $1,200, $1,500, $2,400 a month for a location, 
And unless you can justify that, it doesn't make sense. There's there's one person in the three in the three print everything group, uh, three print everything for profit group, that uh, he got started after I got started, and he was inspired by my story. He's in Florida, and he got an awesome location in a mall. So if you can, if you can get a location where there's you know people walking back and forth, and you want to do retail, you want to have either prints for sale or you want to sell 3D printers. If I remember right, and I could be wrong on this. But his main bread and butter is selling Creality's. He's a he's a big seller for Creality. He does their their um, he takes any returns from Amazon, refurbishes it, makes sure it's still a good printer, and then sells them at a discount. So there, you know, he's he's using different opportunities to make money. So he's not just you know printing for a profit. He's reselling printers that people have have put back on Amazon. So you can look for opportunities like that from different companies. But um, what he's paying for that location in a mall is low enough that he's able to sell enough printers a year for him to put money in the bank. And when he had told me how much he had in the bank, I think a year or two ago, I was jealous, honestly. He, he had put away much more than me, and I was super excited for him, and I was like, well, man, let's look at space around here. So I've, I looked up to get equivalent amount of space to what he was. It would cost me over 80000 a year to have equivalent space where I am to what he had and you know he was I think 10 times less than that on what he was paying so it just doesn't make sense for me you know if he put 50 grand in the bank and you know it only cost him 10 grand to have that space he made 60,000 that year you know plus whatever his running costs and buying new materials are you know if I made 60 grand a year but I had to pay 80 in space you, you know, I'm now in the whole 20,000. So, so it didn't make sense for me to move into a comparable space at one of my local malls. You know, maybe it would because I'd make more sales, but I don't know. And I don't have that type of money to do that. I don't have credit because I filed bankruptcy. So I, you know, very, very recently, and if, if this is your first video, then feel free to watch a lot of my, my older ones because I'm literally standing in a garage. Um, I got this space at such a low price that it just made sense for me to move out of my garage. And the walk-ins that I get from people going next door to a Happy Bowl are well worth it. Um, another thing, I would recommend not necessarily trying to resell items on, uh, you know, from Thingiverse or anything like that. You got to watch out for licenses and everything else like that. Um, so how I started this and what I would recommend on my side if you're wanting to do something like me is be a service. Um, you're going to need a Google listing, a website, you're going to want a Facebook page. Um, if you can do those and set those up, give yourself a couple of good reviews, get a couple of customers to give yourself good reviews, you know, you'll start to look like a reputable company and you can start to handle bigger orders. Um, reviews, yeah, the Google listing is a big one. You want to do that. You want to manage your own Google listing. Even if you put it on your house, you know, it's still a business listing. It's still, when someone searches 3D print everything, you'll have a map location that people can say, oh, 10 miles away, 5 miles away, 50 miles away is a 3D print shop that I can call, that I could ship my parts to, um, that I can see if they can do, do the job for me. Um, so Google listing's important. And what else, what else, what else? Let me keep thinking. You want to think about PPE? I, I do, we won't talk about PPE stuff. Um, I'm just trying to think profit-wise. Um, getting good deals on filament is definitely one. Um, you know, once you get into the five to twenty, you know, printers range, you're going to be buying and using, you know, twenty rolls at one time. And if you get a decent enough order that all those printers are running, you're going to want to buy filament in bulk. You don't need to be buying from Amazon at twenty, twenty seven dollars an hour. Um, you can sit there and start buying in bulk. So GST is one company that I bought from. I bought over 150 rolls from them. Won't go too deep into GST, but you need to, you know, be careful what you pay for. Um, I bought these at eight dollars a roll, and I've had at least thirty out of 150 rolls give me problems, and that's jammed some of my machines. It slowed down production. It stopped production on that big printer multiple times. Um, so you got to kind of watch out. But at eight dollars a roll, you, you know, my profit on one project that I have a ton of parts for, if I was paying fifteen dollars a roll, you know, I, I just about cut my material cost in half. So instead of paying two thousand dollars for materials. I'm only paying 750 and that's, you know, that's another $1,200, and I can literally double that order of filament. So it still kind of makes sense, even with 30 rolls, but there is a hassle with that. Um, so you want to look into bulk. Um, producing filament, that's a bit um, much for, for and, and recycling filament. Just don't, don't go down that route. If you don't have 30, 40 printers, if you don't have 100,000 in the bank, 
Don't even look into filament production. Don't look into trying to recreate filament. None of that is worth it. The profit is not there. Um, not not starting off. Um, you need regular income. You need you know con constant orders that are providing you monthly income. You, you know, and and what you'll find out, at least what I found out, is some of my industry partners, some of my my you know, larger companies that are 50, 100 plus employees that need some parts from a small 3D print shop, um, you know, they will become repeat customers. Those will be some of your best customers because they don't care about the price relatively. You can't just charge them ridiculous prices, but they don't care that, you know, you're charging $6 an hour, $3 an hour, $10 an hour. They just need parts and they need them quickly. And that's, that's where the service side will really shine because you can provide fast turnaround parts, especially if you've got a nice bank of cheap printers. You know, a lot of these bigger companies, let's say they have a printer, and I, I get this a lot. They have one, two printers, and they use it, but it's broken down. It's been broken down for weeks. They can't get the company that made the printer to come out and fix it, or they just haven't yet. So you need to provide that fast turnaround service, and doing it on a $200, $500 printer is totally fine and acceptable and will make a perfectly good or better part than what they were even dealing with. So... Um, you know, be aware of that. I think of anything else here I can think of, you know, small, small things to complement the business are nice. You know, if you're willing to, to paint a part for them, if you want to charge for support removal, I don't really charge for support removal. I kind of bundle that into my hourly cost. Um, there might be a cert certain projects where you're talking about an hour long cleanup. Maybe you want to charge them $40 for cleanup or explain, Hey, there's going to be a lot of supports on your print. We're going to go ahead and charge a little bit extra to clean that print up. Otherwise, if you want to get at it with, you know, a pair of welding pliers, you can go ahead and do that. Um, so that's good. Being a reseller of 3D printers is a good idea. If, uh, if you're in a storefront, if you're in a high volume area, you know, don't think of selling a printer to someone as competition. You know, if they want a printer, they're going to buy one and they're going to buy it off Amazon or eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Um, if you can make 20 to $50 off them purchasing a printer, then do it. Um, become a reseller. Reach out to people. King Rune is a good is a good brand. I love them. Creality is a good brand. You, you know, a ton of people want to buy Creality. Tin Log is a good brand. Um, there's quite a few that will become resellers. There's some that don't like resellers. Prusa doesn't do any resellers. They don't have a reseller program. They want to sell all their printers themselves from their website out of their country. Um, so you just have to look uh, for your opportunities there. Same with filament. You want to be a reseller for filament. You got a brand you really like. You know, reach out to the companies. It doesn't matter if it's a Chinese company or a U.S. company or whatever. If you're looking for income, you know, do what you can to make income. Um, supporting things like the laser engraving might be a good idea. You know, I haven't made a ton of jobs off of the laser engraving yet, but I have made some, and uh, it is worth it. You know, if you can if you can laser engrave a shitload of these and put, you know, your logo on one or Christmas stuff on the other or customize it for someone, then do it. Um, it's it's about you know, just kind of doing whatever you can to make money, but also not overwhelming yourself at the same time. Um, build it up to where it's, you, you know, it feels natural. You, you know, a lot of us are going to have jobs. You, you know, I was fortunate enough to where as I left my previous job, um, I had a little bit of income saved. So I was able to go six months, eight months, and I did some things in between. I literally mowed lawns my first year of 3D printing to help supplement a little bit of income. And I didn't even do that as a full-time job. Just some of my neighbors on my Facebook forum were like, hey, you know, I need my lawn mowed. I'm willing to pay 30 bucks. It's like, okay, I'll go mow a lawn for 30 minutes. And, and the way I looked at that is, why should I pay $30 to go work out at a gym when I can get paid $30 to go sweat for 45 minutes in someone else's yard? So if you can get paid to do things you would otherwise other people are paying for, then do it. You know, getting paid to do a workout, in my opinion, is one of the easiest things you can do. You know, I'm now to a point where I'm too busy to go get paid to work out. Um, I turned down all my, my lawn mowing jobs because, honestly, if I'm starting, you know, a bank of these printers, if I, if I can run this printer twice in one hour period, I've already made more than what I would do um, mowing a lawn. So, so that's the type of stuff you have to think of. Um, and think like that. Get your mind in a situation, I would say this is, you know, point 15, 16, whatever we're at, get your mind in a situation with 3D printing to where you're always looking at things to 3D print. I'm going to go ahead and plug my phone in here because it's died a couple times. Um, but, you know, just like when I was a welder, one of the first things that our instructors told us is, hey, if you go to Six Flags, don't look at the welds. The welds aren't very good at Six Flags. It'll scare you. You might not want to get on some of the rides. And sure enough, they were right. But that mindset of, oh, hey, when I get to a location and I see something that's welded, 
look at them. Look at the welds. Look at the welds on your cars. Stuff like that. You know, and I'm not saying for y'all now, but I'm saying as a welder, I was looking at it. So as a 3D printer, look at things you can 3D print. Look at stuff that you can 3D print. When you're out networking, uh, when you're out talking to new people and they ask, what do I need 3D printed? You know, a lot of people, because this is something to where you can print everything, you can print anything just about within reason, asterisk. Um, you know, like one of the conversations, as an example, you, you, got, you go out networking and put that as a point. You know, go networking. Look for local networking groups. Look for business networking groups. Look up the uh, city chamber of commerce. And that's meant for all the business owners in the city to, um, you know, go and, and, and network and whatnot. Um, go to those events. And when you're there and someone says, hey, what do I need 3D printed? I can't think of anything I need 3D printed. Ask if they have, you know, are, are, you, are you shopping for anyone for a gift? Uh, you know, someone have a birthday, is Christmas coming up? What's their hobby? You know, would their hobby support um, a 3D printer? Would their hobby support, you, you know, making a cut? Like one of them, for example, he collected custom uh, license plates. So it's like, okay, through talking with her about license plate, well, what if we print her, print him a custom license plate? And then we put, you know, his name on it and what college he went to and all the states he lived in. And then we paint it for her. And that's a $150, $200 license plate that's completely customized. There's not another one out in the world. And he puts that above the door in the single most presentable spot for all his other license plate. It's the flagship of his collection now. And he loves that license plate. And that was a really cool project I did for somebody that I met in a networking group. And I think that particular lady sold Mary Kay. So I didn't do anything for a Mary Kay business. I probably could have printed her, you, you know, a little holder for her, for her Mary Kay stuff. I could have printed a log to hold makeup, you know, little slots. There's, there's all different types of things that you can think of. You know, one of the ways that I network is, you, you know, print out a little engine block from Thingiverse, put your business name on it, fill it up with cards, and drop this off at every auto shop store around you. You know, you drop this off at an auto parts store. If they have just an average business card holder and you said, hey, would you like a cool business card holder? They might buy it. If they say, no, no, we're not interested in buying that for 20, 40, 50 bucks. You say, well, hey, what if I leave it here and just leave my cards in it? And I, I have not had one shop say I don't want that engine block. Not one. They all want this. Now, I haven't literally gone and made an effort to reach 50 to 100 shops, but I know for damn sure I've placed at least 10 or 20 of these whenever I just happen to go into a, uh, a shop. And you can do that for anyone. If you, if you want to be proactive, find a shop you like, find a business you like, get on Tinkercad, customize something for them, print it out, and give it to them. You know, it's not going to cost you anything but a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. If you're doing nothing and you're looking for jobs, that is a great way to uh, guerrilla marketing you know you're not going to be spending money on it on facebook and, and, and that would be another point do not spend money on facebook marketplace ads on google ads on youtube ad don't don't spend any ads don't spend money on ads learn how to guerrilla market and you will be much better you know just google guerrilla marketing and different ways to do it but literally boots on the ground word of mouth will will start to build a business months and year after year you know i, I get hit up from people who talked to me a, a year or two ago, or who are a client a year or two ago. And that's what's now helping propel to make me be even busier and busier, as a lot of these clients are coming back. Um, you know, if you can partner with a specific company, like one company I've wanted to partner with is somebody that sells succulents. If I could work with someone who does a booth at different events as often as there's events and they have succulent pots, if you can make a good deal with them and you print at $1.50, $2, $3 an hour to cut them a really good deal, maybe you price it at $6 an hour and you say, okay, you're getting 10, 15 cups. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a good deal on uh, 3d printed pots. Then they'll be really happy. And, and you show that, you know, retail is this and that, that, um, you're giving it to them less. And, just so y'all know who are watching this video, I have had to do a couple cuts. I'm not very good at editing. One day I'll get a really good editor and my videos will start to look a little bit more impressive. But right now what I'm doing is literally shooting on a phone and stitching, you know, the, these videos one after the other. So I try to watch the end of the video when one cuts off and I don't realize it and then, you know, continue where I left off. So, so sometimes if you're hearing repeated words or you see a glitch in the, in the feed, um, that's just me restarting the camera. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, get in the mindset of 3D printing things for people as giveaways, for, for reviews, for, you know, giveaways to, to get marketing out there. Um, anything else I can think of? I, I'm starting to, to run out. I think I've given, you know, 10, 15, 20 different points here on uh, things you can do to immediately start making you money to help change the way that you're pricing, uh, to begin pricing in the first place. 
Um, so, you know, look out for these things. Rewatch this video if you need to. Share it with other people. I really appreciate your subscribes and everything else like that. I hope this is helpful. Um, if it's not helpful, please, in the comments, put what you would like to hear. If, if you want me to do a, another video or a video specifically on something, make a comment. Uh, tag me in it. I would love to, uh, to, to conversate with you. If, if you look in my comments, I'm generally um, down there responding to every comment I can. Um, because I am a small person and I am only getting a small amount of comments right now. Um, I can respond to everyone. It's not like I'm getting 10,000 comments and I just can't keep up with that. So, so I can every one to three days get on there and make sure that I'm answering your questions or helping you out. Um, the other resource for you, if you've made it this far in the video, I have a 3D print everything for profit page. So 3D print everything for profit. It's a page to help you um, make money with your 3D printer. You can ask all these questions. You can find a lot of these answers there. I'm just trying to condense it in a YouTube video here. If you do uh, want to get added to the group, you need to answer all of the questions and try to answer it in a long form. Um, I don't accept people that don't answer the questions. I don't accept people that just put yes, yes, yes. Um, so you need to explain, you know, how you got there, why you're there, um, what you can do to help the group. Um, you know, it's not too much. Just put a little bit in there. Um, I appreciate it. The other people in the group appreciate it. We do keep people from uh, posting ads in there. If you see an ad, flag it. I'll, I'll remove it. Um, if there's good communication along a certain ad or something, I might leave it. But the majority of the time, I'm going to take out people that, that are filling the, the group full of ads so that it can be full of, you know, helpful posts. Um, anything else? I think that's about it. I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this video here, guys. I appreciate all of your support. I appreciate the comments I got on the last video. I hope this one can be you know, as useful and as uh, informative to people, if not more, I, I really hope it's more useful because um, I'm trying not to talk about my experience and what I did, but specifically the money-making points that got me there without the backstory. So if you want to learn a little bit more about me, go back and watch that other video. I think it's just as long. Um, I've made this one, this video now just as long and, and I, I hope that I've filled it up with more information. So let me know what you think. And uh, thanks guys. We'll talk to you soon.